I also guys wanted to show you my new um, kind of chest storage thing we they had these on sale they have them right now um, if you're looking for something like this at Costco it's like the resined plastic kind of stuff and you can lift it up it's really deep it's dry this is for it to keep stuff that I don't want in my greenhouse Hi guys, welcome to the greenhouse. Um, my name is Brandy, if you're new here. And um, today I have been out here, actually I was doing a lot of chicken chores and things that needed to be done. Um, I had taken off all of the plastic and um, tarps and things off of the greenhouse, not the greenhouse, the chicken, um, the second chicken coop that we have. Um, I want to say it's been a couple weeks ago. It had, it's just, had gotten so warm it wasn't necessary. Looking at the long range forecast I didn't see any crazy you know like 60 year cold temperatures like we had back at Christmas when we put all that up. And we, we cut everything so that we can just tack it up and use it again when needed. So I got like a um, tote with a lid and went and I, I had been storing it inside that other chicken coop because we had it closed off and um, we weren't using it. So I just put it in there for storage until I got a tote. So I got a tote, or John got me a tote. And uh, on one of his many trips to the Home Depot, and, um, <laughs> and so I folded all that up, put it up, and put it in my new, um, storage um bench that we got from costco for the garden stuff i love that thing i really wasn't sure about it i, I was looking at a shed to put out here in the garden and in truth the st i just needed the stuff that i needed i could totally stack up and put in there and um it was a better price because i think we're kind of thinking long term we may end up building like a real wood shed. We already have several of the um, the resin type sheds that you can get, like the heavy duty plastic stuff. And, and they're great. They're just never big enough. <laughs> it's never big enough. So, um, so we went with that and it works for the space. It's right next to the greenhouse and um, I'm very happy with it. It was, we paid $189 for it. And um, so that is working well. So I got to clean out that. I put in some new pine pellets. Uh, put in new food and water because we're having a lot of um, chatty chickens because they all want this one laying box. And when I had both of these coops open, they had one favorite laying box in each coop. And so I feel like I'm, I've actually had a couple cracked eggs because the girls are getting clearly getting testy with one another and moving the eggs around and Okay, so I used a pro mix that I kind of mixed up myself For these seed trays and I'm happy with that mix. I feel like it's done pretty well um, But when I'm potting up, I'm actually using a pro mix if I can pick it up It's actually a potting mix Looks like that. I got this one at Walmart. I think I got it last fall. And <clears throat> I have it down here at the ground. And so what I try to do is I try to get probably about two thirds of the cup with some soil. And I put a big, like with my finger, I kind of hole out the middle. And if you watch my other video, you saw I use this little tool. And I'm going to be real honest. I think it's an artist tools. And I used it for get scooping out my plants and or raking things over i use that to rake the soil over um depending on how i was supposed to plant and start you know the different seeds and stuff like that so i'm i'm almost positive this is one of my other grandmother's artist tools she was an artist painter um seamstress musician 
she could do it all. She was just amazing. And um, when she passed away, she had so much stuff. And I got just different bits and pieces. And I'm not an artist. <laughs> My son is. Um, and he, matter of fact, he has a lot of her. He actually still uses some of her old brushes and things that she had and took care of. And just things that probably not quite made the same way nowadays as they were back then. And, um, but there were just things that I found I could use. And this is one of them. And so, yeah. So that's all that is. But you, uh, the other thing we've used in the past is a painter's key. You could use that too. So, Anyway, so I'm going to take some of this soil. And this one has some food to it, even though I'm fertilizing my starts and stuff. But just to give it a good medium. And so you can see, and I'm just kind of putting a hole down in there so I can set these nice roots down in there and they can keep growing down. Um, so let's see, let me move that one. We're gonna grab this one and you just want it very gently, very gently. And if you can see, see those roots hanging down? That's a nice little plant. And so then I just kind of put it in there like that and I'm gonna top it off with some more soil on top. And I've already labeled my cup cauliflower. This one is the uh, Flame Star Cauliflower. I think this one was a Haas. I'm pretty sure this was a Haas seed. And I'm just gonna put it in my tray over here with my broccolis and my chamomile tea. So that's how easy it is. I'll do, um, I'll do one more. I always try to do that when I'm canning and showing stuff because kind of like when somebody's giving you your phone a phone number you know and you get half of it written down and you're like I don't want to have to listen to this whole message again because I didn't get all the phone number it's so nice those people who will repeat the number a second time my my number is and you say it again and then you're like oh thank you thank you so much I know I cannot be the only person who struggles with that all right so I'm going to put this one down in our little pot and we're going to add some backfill, some soil in it. It was hard today. Today the kids went back to school. We're done with our winter break. It was really nice last week. John took a couple of days off. We were able to get some projects done and my son was able to get through his driver's ed classroom course. So now we just have to wait for his six hours of driving instruction where they're actually, they bring the car, pick him up and take him to do all the things. I mean, we let him drive all the time, but with us, but this is in our state, this was a law that was passed now that the kids have to go through to get a license. And um, to me, it, I know that they have uh, scholarships for kids who maybe they would not have the income, their families to pay for it. And so, um, but I think it's such a great thing for the kids. Um, I know that my other, my other son has benefited greatly from the program. Uh, my oldest boys, it was like old school. So if you can see the roots. And so I just sitting them down in there. But he got that done and then he helped his dad and his job, it kind of cut back hours with the economy. A lot of things businesses aren't doing as well but they still seem to do okay like on the weekends so he's been working weekends 
so he was happy to work at home building a fence and he did a lot of garden work stuff for me building beds and he he got paid well to help him because he's saving for a car so so the next part is once you get these you get your starts in their new part their new setting you want to give them some water now I have water in the bottom of the tray that has some fertilizer but I want to this is a new water I got and I love it and so you just want to give them a little drink and this thing you just pump it and it does it it's amazing it's um, a multi-purpose a chappin multi-purpose sprayer and you just pump it and then it'll spray continuously it's amazing love it I can put a link in the description and it was really inexpensive so it was I did get it off Amazon so I don't know where else you can get it so I'll just link that but anyway that's how you pot it up and you could leave them in here the problem I have is that I have so many of them where there's more than one plant and um, I want to salvage some of those plants and I can be done with this tray and move to another tray and that's kind of what I'm looking for because probably in the next I'd say the next week to probably 10 days I'll be doing my I'll be starting my um, well, definitely my heirloom tomatoes my peppers and I don't do a whole lot of eggplant um, we're not huge eggplant people I usually like to have a few a couple plants and I'm good so I'll probably do a couple of those they take a little bit longer and I want to have those on the inside with the grow lights and the heater because I do we do in the long range forecast we will get down I think the lowest I saw was maybe 39 um, and I just not I don't think I want to put my peppers and stuff out here just yet I usually will not plant my peppers here in Georgia um, north of Atlanta 7b growing zone I, I won't plant them before May for I usually do it around Mother's Day um, because we always will get that one little cold thing and it, it stunts them and so that's why I'm a little hesitant to put them out here in the greenhouse even with a heat mat plus I've got other stuff on the heat mat that's out here I have more than one heat mat so that one I probably will just move to the inside setup and the reason I said I would do the heirloom tomatoes are because you really want to be able to plant those those roots a little bit deeper so they might benefit from being potted up and be a little bit better established plant than um, a non heirloom like just a hybrid tomato um, and I do both so there, there's, there's not necessarily one's better than the other um, it really just depends on what you're trying to do a lot of the heirloom ones they have some really good flavor a lot of times though they can be a little stingy with the yield um, and a lot of times they will have a more difficult time with disease and, and things like that where some of these hybrids um, can put on prolific fruit and um, and they do much better you know, like against blight and things like that so um, something for you to think about you know when you're thinking about growing tomatoes and things like that and you really would just want you want one that you like to eat you know too so then you have to think about do you want to just slice it and have tomato sandwiches and stuff like that or are you looking for canning like are you thinking about you want to start canning and what kind of tomatoes are going to be best for that um i'll use them all <laughs> i have tried a long time to to just do like a good batch of paste type tomatoes and I haven't had a lot of luck with the paste tomatoes and uh, did really well last year with the Juliet tomato it's not necessarily a paste tomato it's really kind of an in-between between a paste and um, a large it's not a cherry but a lot kind of like a larger oblong cherry um, so they're smaller but little to no seeds and boy are they prolific and I did really well with those but I 
I just take what I can get. I, I'm not saying I won't try for paste tomatoes. It just has not. They just haven't done as well for me here. And this, I typically get disease and um, not real sure why. Because um, all the rest of them like it here. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, I hope that this uh, will encourage you or excite you about the upcoming growing season. Um, don't get too excited because we get all these little fake outs of some you know, it's not even summer but spring and um and then you'll get like blackberry winter and you know matter of fact my grandmother my mimi would always say well don't put your plants out until after good friday and blackberry winter <laughs> and uh that she never did and she was always a successful gardener so um that was those were what her mom and daddy taught her and her granny so um probably good good words to live by however you can plant cooler weather crops um and should especially if you live in somewhere like georgia or because if you don't they won't have enough time to mature and then they'll bolt and so but for warm weather crops yes the the black after blackberry winter and good friday are always some good ones to follow but anyway with that i hope that you have a great day and um if you are starting some seeds for the first time or you're an old pro at it tell us tell me about it in the comments um if you have a great tip that might be helpful to any newbies or even folks like me who think they know what they're doing. <laughs> we always can learn things. I am I love to learn things and I especially love to learn from people who are a little bit more seasoned than I am and I appreciate that they have um, good information to share. And so if you have any of that, please feel free to put it in the comments below and allow us to glean from you. So. With that, I will see you next time. Bye.